In John chapter 3, a religious leader, a Pharisee, slinks through Jerusalem's dark streets, crossing now and then from one side to the other to avoid walking through a brace of moonlight. At this hour, his colleagues are almost certainly settled in for the night, but he dares not risk being seen. His sneakiness feels silly, but the questions he means to ask of Jesus are anything but. In John 4, a woman shambles along a dust-dry path under a blistering sun shaded only by the empty bucket she balances on her head. No sensible person comes to Jacob's well in the heat of the day, but that's precisely the point. A woman with a grubby reputation prefers privacy over comfort. They could not be more different, the Pharisee and the woman. He's a Jewish man. She's a Samaritan woman. He's morally scrupulous. She bears the stigma of moral ruin. He's deeply invested in his community. She's isolated from hers. He's influential. She's a cipher. They are as unlike as any two people could possibly be. Even so, they have much in common. The religious leader is ashamed to be identified with Jesus. The woman is just ashamed. Neither wants to be seen, but both will be exposed, he for what he does not know and she for what is known about her. Each hides secrets, his of fledgling faith, hers a failed past. He comes seeking answers, but returns with nothing but questions. And she comes only to slack her thirst, but leaves with surprising answers. Jesus riddles each of them with enigmatic words about water, spirit, and truth, leaving both of them confused but intrigued. And in the middle of all of it, linking these two polar opposite characters, is Jesus. The things that divide and separate us are ascendant these days. Religion, race, and politics, economic, immigration and social status, gender, sex, and sexual orientation. Technology, once touted as a savior, able to span the chasms between us, erase the borders and connect people, has really served only to spin us deeper into cocoons of self-selected isolation and more efficient ways of spreading hate. John's stories, though, remind us that division is not a recent invention. Even then, people excelled and estrangement. And as far back as Genesis, we knew how to rage at one another. All you needed was some misdirected anger and a rock. In his conversation with Nicodemus, the Pharisee, Jesus alluded to the answer to our alienation. He said, just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up. We serve a God who is willing to die to restore our relationship to Him. And that teaches us at least two important truths. Reconciliation is stratospherically expensive, and reconciliation is worth it. If we will tell that story often enough and well enough and embody it in our lives, perhaps others, even people who are nothing like us at all, will find it as compelling and transforming as we do. Jesus has always attracted opposites. It's not a sermon. It's just a thought.